third stage is the service transition. So what we did in the strategy, we made the long-term objectives, goals. We want to go from the dial-up to the broadband services because we realize that this is what our customers want. This is what our customers see value in this. And so we want to, you know, get into this so that we can be more valuable to our customers. And that's why we decided to migrate our services to the broadband. And then in the design, we went into the specifics of what exactly needs to be done in order to have these uh, broadband services, for example, invest in the infrastructure, implement the DSL technology, buy certain modems, uh, train our staff and things like this. Now in service transition, we need to deploy the services we designed in the previous stage into the live production environment. This is what we, you know, um, deal with in the service transition. So you have a design services, but now you want to deploy, you want to commission those services into the live business in the production environment. And you can't just do it right away because it's a production environment. You need to go through certain processes to make sure that your services, your uh, transition is as smooth as possible. It should not give you surprises. It should not go into the, um, you know, uh, in, in, in failure. So you want to minimize the risk. You want to minimize the chances of the outages. So that's why in transition, you need to deal with certain processes just to make sure that this process is smooth and as per our expectations. So here, all the changes we decided in the service design package, we implemented and we use certain processes just to make sure that all our uh, changes are smooth as per expectations with the minimum risk and they don't result in any unplanned outages, any uh, unnecessary risk and in any unnecessary extra cost. So these are the things we need to keep in mind in the service transition. Like other uh, stages, we also have certain, um, you know, uh, processes in this stage, which are the common processes, which make sure that we achieve all the targets or the best practices in this stage. For example, transition planning and support. How are we gonna implement how are we gonna deploy our services smoothly into the live business environment without unnecessary risk, without any outages, ex, you know, unexpected, uh, unplanned outages, without any extra labor costs, without any additional timelines. You know, we wanna do everything as per our um, you know, uh, the uh, scheduled um, planning. So this uh, process actually helps us to do the things smoothly. Then there's another one, the change management. In my previous webinar, we spoke about the change management process where how can we make the changes smooth, changes as per our expectations. And I gave you an example over there. For example, the vendor asks you to change your hardware, change your server hardware from 32-bit to 64-bit. Or your vendor, you know, advise you to change your operating system from Windows Server 2012 to Windows Server 2016. Are you gonna do it right away? No, because it's the live business environment. So you need to follow a certain process. For example, you make a request for change, and then document all the advantages and the reasons you want to have this change. You present it to the, in front of a change advisory board based on their you know, permission or rejection, you further go ahead with. And even if they permit you, you need to build and test it to see if it is as per your expectation. And then you apply and still you need a contingency planning to see if uh, in, in case something goes wrong. 
Then there's another process, service asset and configuration management. Here you keep track of all the assets which are needed at this stage and you control their life cycle. You control the changes to their life cycle and you have all their configurations documented so that you have all the complete record of those. Then there's another one, release and deployment management. Here you take care of all the releases. What is a release, by the way? You know, release is kind of a, um, the authorized changes um, is called a release. And in a service, depending on your customer's changing business environment or customer's requests, you may need to make changes into it. So release is basically a set of authorized changes you make into an IT service. It can be a you know component change, it can be a service change, it can be you know a, a asset change. Uh, it could be different one. Normally, just like you hear in the software, release 1.1, release 1.2, release 1.3, and why they come up with the new and new releases because they may see a bug in the software or they may see some issue in the software or maybe there's a vulnerability in the software. So they always come up with the latest version and uh, you know they can say this is a new release and so these are set of authorized changes. Then there's another process we take into consideration into the transition stage is the knowledge management. Knowledge management is about the things which you have already gone through you know, for example, if you had the similar outage in the FAS, or you had the similar sort of uh, incident in the past, um, what did you do? And what did you learn from that experience? So rather than, you know, if we have the same situation again, and rather than we rediscover the knowledge, why not we document it what we learned and so that if someone needs to do the same thing again in future or come across to this situation, then they should um, take advantage of the things we have already um, you know, learned. They don't need to rediscover the knowledge. In this way, we can save time. In this way, we can you know, be, uh, you know, provide these speedy solutions and we can be more efficient. So knowledge management is about documenting everything we learn. We, you know, get, uh, for example, you know, changing from this particular service to this uh, service, we had these types of uh, issues. Why not document it? So if someone gets into the same situation in future, you know, they, they can always refer from this knowledge management, um, you know, document in your database and, take advantage of already uh, discovered knowledge rather than they rediscover it.